discover your very own Ireland at discoverireland.com. The next stop off on my Irish travels is the booming international city of Dublin. There you're guaranteed patch-wearing literati, time-honoured sights, legendary watering holes to dip in and sip in, and always a laugh. I'll show you all these, plus a few hidden gems that are not listed on the tourist guides. I give you a stuffed hippopotamus, ladies and gentlemen. This is my hometown, Dublin. There you are! You've woken up in Dublin, you've got a sore head, and you're in need of a pick-me-up. I have the perfect answer. It's the 14th of March and it's early in the morning. And I recommend if you do come to Dublin, you should have at least one dip in the sea. Welcome to Dublin. If I see dips in your bag, Head over to the 40-foot bathing place at Sandy Cove on the south side of Dublin. Freezing your bits off does have its reward, though. Sandy Cove's top attraction is yards away, the James Joyce Museum. Dublin is, of course, famed for its rich literary heritage. This historic Martello Tower pays homage to one of our most celebrated authors. This is quite famous, the death mask of James Joyce. There's not many men. In all serious, we'll go in for a dicky bow and an eye patch. If you're a big fan of James Joyce, and many, many people are, this is ground zero, man. This is the spot. Come up. This is the room for six days when James Joyce was 22. He lived here to the roof. Look at this. Let's get a clean sweep of the city. Up here on this hill, Kalini, this is where Bono lives. Over here is Hoth, on the north side of Dublin, where the finest of men and the best looking of women come from. God's holy country. And naturally, that's where us Maxwells hail from. I'm heading there next for a rather unusual game of golf, one that will expose another hidden Irish gem. This is Andrew Maxwell's golf classic, Pigeon Pull. Yes! The reason why we're here, there's method to my madness. There's something in here I want to show you. Something very special. There it is. It's a dolmen. An ancient burial ground of pre-Celtic royalty. Thousands of years old. You know, your sort of Stone Age job. Is there a plaque? No. Is it guarded in any way? No. Do we then be know who it is? Probably somebody in a museum somewhere. But in Dublin, it's just in the middle of a golf course. There you are! If hacking your way around Dublin filled golf courses isn't your thing, there's other attractions within easy reach of Dublin. There's the Wicklow Mountains, there's Beaches Galore, and there's Newgrange in the Boyne Valley. That's the leafy suburbs. Now for town, as everybody knows the city centre. Go straight to Moor Street Market and inflame your senses. You know, other tourist guys would have taken you to fancy shopping centres or show you where the, the rich people live. This is Moor Street, man. This is real Dublin. This is where you get quality fruit and veg. It's times like this that I wish, wish cameras had smell o vision you could smell, that's what Moor Street's about, the smell of fruit, the smell of veg, the smell of fish, the smell of meat, the smell of pigeons, the smell of life. It's multicultural, the hub of multicultural Dublin. 
Okay, this is my whistle stop guide to the other main sites to look out for. And this is the River Liffey that runs through Dublin. There's the famous Haveny Bridge there. And beyond it, again as a markup to prove we're rich, we've built another pedestrian bridge. Not one, but two pedestrian bridges. Spire, spike. I don't really see the point of it, unless Ireland is gonna get together and break the world club sandwich record. This is the top of Fleet Street. It leads on the top of bar, all the way along this road for a solid mile. There's just loads of bars where tourists come and get twisted every weekend. Please, come to my country, get drunk in one of our bars in the street that we have allocated for you to get drunk in. Trinity College Dublin it is equally of uh, academic standing in the world of academia. Academically, that is. <laughs> if I can recommend one place above all, it's the Natural History Museum, a taxidermist's paradise. Inside, there's just millions and millions of animals, all stuffed in cases. Loads and loads. It's really spooky and cool in a Victorian way. Check it out. What kind of animal do you like? We've got one stuffed for you right here. How about that? It's tigers. It's like proper from the age of Victorian hunters. And everything was all about <laughs> shoot it, stuff it, stick it in the museum. Just look up at the galleries all around you. There's millions and millions of heads of deers, ocelots. There's very few natural history museums that are like this anymore, you know? They're all interactive and it's all about preserving the animals. But this is almost a history of natural history. This is the way it used to be. An elephant, a stuffed elephant. How do you get the fig into the fig roll? How did they get a stuffed elephant through the doors? I present to you a giraffe, a giraffe. I give you a stuffed hippopotamus, ladies and gentlemen. A stuffed walrus. I can actually see into the nasal cavity of a walrus. And here, the finest exhibition. I give you, in preceding order, of intelligence, wit, and beauty, the orangutan, the chimpanzee, the gorilla, and none other than the skeleton of my great-great-grandfather, Zachariah Maxwell. My film's finale is where it all started for me, at the International Comedy Club, so I thought it fitting that this is where our journey should end. All right. <laughs> All right, this is the International Bar. This is where I started off doing stand-up when I was 18. As you can see, it's, uh, it's intimate. It's still, to this day, probably one of the only comedy gigs I've ever done where you don't use a microphone. There's no need. And it's the best little comedy gig in the world. And tonight, for fun, the boys let me jump up for a one-off appearance. <laughs> I say we strike over the island, and we steal their gold! <laughs> when I did a gig here, when I started off here when I was 18, there was nothing done. 20% unemployment. Everybody had to emigrate. And now it's a delightful city, man. There's not only an optimism, it's not only self-confidence, just a self-assuredness now. Dublin has gone from being a charismatic, but eventually quite angry drunk, to a very, very pleasant drinking partner. Discover your very own Ireland at discoverireland.com.